You know, I love podcasting. I have since 2006, back when you had to use like a Dixie cup with string to make the thing work. And that's why I'm so excited that we recently moved Mysterious Goings On to Anchor FM to record our podcast. I got to tell you, I don't regret it a bit. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. I'm not going to lie to you, when I first heard about Anchor, I was a little dubious because I've been doing it the hard way for so long. But I got to tell you, it's very easy. Use a Stripe account get sponsors you're not paying monthly hosting fees the sound quality is great the distribution is phenomenal friends download the free anchor app today if you want to start your own podcast or go to anchor.fm to get started remember you heard it here first on mysterious goings on Welcome to Mysterious Goings On. I'm Jay Alexander Greenwood. You can call me Alex. And if you're new to the show, we talk about writing genre fiction. And that's what we do week in, week out. And we hope to have other authors to talk to you on the show soon. But this one is going to be a brief episode just to talk a little bit about writing about guns. Violence in general, but guns in particular. You know, as a writer of thrillers and murder mysteries, I'm increasingly hesitant about using gun violence in my stories. The savage, senseless massacres, which the rest of the civilized world cannot understand, I might add, including Sandy Hook in particular, and, quote, accidents, unquote, that take place daily in America, often called, uh, you know, unfortunate accidents where a child, for example, picks up a gun and kills another child, or a mentally ill person has a very weak moment or not even a not even a mentally ill person has just a regular person with normal lifestyle issues has a weak moment picks up a gun and kills themselves those kinds of things take place daily in america and they've reinforced my views on gun regulation now i do not own firearms and i don't begrudge citizens responsible citizens who do however i think we should be more realistic about what kind of weaponry is so readily made available to the public The Second Amendment was written at a time when the British occupying government was trying to limit gun ownership to make sure an armed insurrection did not occur. It was also a time when the Founding Fathers had no conception of the kind of incredible damage our modern weapons can do. Now, you know, if it ticks off fans of my work that I raise the question and I advocate for stricter gun regulations, so be it, I write for the joy of writing. You can look at my royalty statements to see that that's got to be the only reason. And it offends, if it offends anyone, though, that I want sensible, sane gun laws to prevent children from being slaughtered, well, you know, that's the price I pay in a lost book sale or two. It's It bothers me. I've had some real thinking to do about my fiction. I even went through a phase where I couldn't finish my fourth book because I was so uh, affected by what happened at Sandy Hook in particular, I just couldn't put a gun in my hero's hand one more time. Not that I ever wanted him to always solve problems with a weapon. I liked him to use his wits and sometimes just good luck to get through things. And in a way, it's really made me, I think, a better writer because guns in particular can be a crutch for a writer trying to get through uh, or get a character through a story. It's so much simpler to say, and he and the bad guy drew down on the street, and that was the end of it. You know, he the good guy wins, which actually, <laughs> you know, is part of what happened in my fourth book. To be to be honest with you, uh, Pilot's Blood. There, there. I'm not going to give it away, but there's there is some gun violence. But uh, I'm pleased to tell you that mm, the lead character, John Pilot, does not whenever possible, use a gun. There's some, a very notable scene where he gets out of a situation without 
shooting anyone. But I don't want to say that using a gun is always a crutch, but I just think that in general it's a pretty easy device to get, you know, your your character through a story. You know, there's the old um, dramatic device of Chekhov's gun. That's not exactly what we're talking about here, but that Chekhov's gun being, no, it's not Mr. Chekhov from Star Trek, but it's about, in a play in particular, or, or a book, if you introduce a gun in the first act, you'd better use it by the third. And I think that a lot of times in the mystery thriller genre, suspense genres in particular, weaponry are casually introduced and casually used. And that's just something that I... Um, I'm going to do my best to avoid. Not that I want to write stories like about MacGyver, you know, where he you know, like never uses a weapon. I don't think that's realistic either. But I'm much more circumspect about casual use of a gun. I was getting ready to say because in real life people don't use guns as much as they do in books and TV. But, you know, more and more these days it seems like they use them every bit as much as they are used in movies and TV. And you have to wonder is the tail wagging the dog a little bit there. I don't know. That's a question for another day. You know, again, I have some thinking to do about my fiction, but I'm much more concerned about the nightmarish reality we live with in today's America. And I'd love to know what you think. And please, I really don't want to start a fight with anybody who's a proud NRA member who wants to put down somebody who they think wants to take away their guns. I really don't have any desire to confiscate people's weapons. I I just think that perhaps some sensible gun laws and perhaps uh, requiring the same licensure we require for a car, for example, or the same kind of insurance that we require for driving a car might be a step in the right direction. And might I also say that maybe an assault type rifle is not necessary for hunting or self-defense unless you really think you're going to defend yourself against the government. And if that's what you think is going to happen in the United States, I, I just couldn't disagree more. I I think that if the United States government really does turn on its people like some people think it will, there's not a heck of a lot even your assault-style rifle is going to do to defend you. Not, I guess I'm not picking fights, but maybe I am. If you have a comment about it, love to hear it. And uh, just feel free to get a hold of me on Twitter. That's one place. It's at A underscore Greenwood. Or go to Clue's blog on PilotsCross.com. That's the mothership. And Pilots Cross is P-I-L-A-T-E-S-C-R-O-S-S. Dot com pilots as in Pontius Pilots Cross dot com and uh, leave a comment there on my blog somewhere. There's a post actually I wrote back I believe in October uh, called on writing about guns. That'd be a great place to leave a comment. All right, well that's going to wrap up the mysterious goings on for today. Chapter two is coming to a close. I hope you'll tune in for chapter three. And if you didn't catch chapter one, catch that one as well. And again, I hope you'll subscribe right here on iTunes and wherever else your podcast catcher may be. So until next time, keep reading. From regular expenses to occasional splurges, there's a lot to buy. Why not get cash back every time you spend? With the PenFed Power Cash Rewards Card, you get cash back on every purchase. That's everywhere, every time you use it. You can even earn a $100 statement credit when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. Visit PenFed.org slash PowerCash to apply. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. A little flexibility can go a long way. By refinancing your newer used auto loan with PenFed, you can lower your monthly payments for more flexibility in your budget. You can even schedule your first payment for up to 60 days from the date of your refinance. Calculate how much you could save at PenFed.org slash auto refi or call 1-800-247-5626 to apply. Membership is open to everyone. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA.